this is what the uh, finished aged bones look like. And it's the same technique I used on the furniture video. It's just spray paint uh, sprayed on and then wiped off as you are watching Kim do in the background. It's not Wednesday. However, I thought I'd post a quick video here. I use this technique a lot right before I'm going to plastic corpse it or corpse it in some other way. That way, because even under the rotting flesh, there's another level of detail. I almost never use a plain bleached white skeleton the way that they come when you buy them. They're pretty good now about having a little bit of color on them, but I also like to alter the color on them by having, you know, because I like to have my own color palette for the show. It helps tie everything together. And being able to do this to them gives them a nice aged look. Uh, this happens to be a Frank and Bucky that we're working on here. And I've added a brow ridge onto the skull with epoxy sculpt, which is a great two-part clay. I use epoxy sculpt a lot. Basically, it's two parts you mix together, and in 20 minutes, it gets pretty firm. But then in you know two or three hours, it is hard plastic, really hard plastic. Here you can see Kevin doing uh, you know the pelvis section. And basically, we're spraying spray paint on heavy. And then we are wiping it off. I mean, it really is that simple. Uh, the spray paint stays in the deep parts. It's basically, it's like an antiquing process. I'm just using spray paint to do it. And this spray paint, it's Krylon. It bonds really well to the resin, and it stays in the cubbies. Like I was saying, though, this skeleton is bigger than normal. It is an 8-foot Franken-Bucky that Anatomical Chart and Dye Company used to make. It's going to be an ogre skeleton in my monster museum. That's why I had to change the brow ridge. Right now, you can see me working inside of the rib cage, and it is so important to get the inside of the rib cage. It's a little bit more work to reach up in there, but it's another layer of depth and detail, and if it's not there, people really notice. Earlier, I sprayed the eyes black. Uh, on this skull, the eyes were not deep, so I spray paint those black and then wipe the, the rims of them. And then I also did the teeth, because I want the teeth to have a little bit more depth. I'm going to do brown over top of that later. But I did want the depth of the black in there. And it'll barely show up, but it'll be a little bit of a difference in between the two. And I, I just love the way these guys look when they're all done. I mean, you can see, if you remember the front looked like right before we flipped it. It's just, it's a huge difference. And back here on the spine, where there's all those little bones... You know, a lot of gunk collects there. And that's a good-looking, been-out-in-the-woods skeleton to me. You know, you could even, you know, put some moss on it or whatever. Just, I used this technique right before. It's the same thing I did on the furniture. You know, it's a great way to age stuff. So, you know, I think a bleached white skeleton, if you're trying to use it in a haunt setting that isn't a doctor's office, then it's pretty unnatural. They just don't come that clean, and they don't get that clean. This whole process took, on this size skeleton, about an hour, hour and 20 minutes, maybe hour and a half. And part of that was because I couldn't finish the head right now because I was waiting on the epoxy sculpt to dry on the forehead. And uh, we'll get, you'll see the face a little bit better right now. But you can see the brow ridge that I added there, and that's all the face that I got to do. So that's me aging a skeleton. I want to thank everybody for watching. A reminder, if you're going to be at National Haunters Convention, I'll be teaching some classes there, and hopefully you can come see me. Thanks.